Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. All right, so I want to move on to Indianapolis. And again, we spoke about this earlier. Um, this is legal. So Indianapolis mother walks free after admitting to smothering her two-month-old baby to death between two couch cushions while high on meth. Judge Mark Stoner found Dacia Lacey not guilty of neglect, resulting in death. Lacey confessed that she wanted her daughter to stop crying and just be quiet so she could get some sleep. The mother was high on meth, smothered her daughter in a cush, couch cushions. Um, Judge Thorner said that the prosecutors didn't do enough to prove she intentionally harmed the baby. Lacey was facing 20 to 40 years in prison. She now walks free. I want to play this clip. It's only 33 seconds. Court accordingly enters judgment of not guilty, reluctantly. I do hope that you will take the opportunity to get the counseling that you need, to get the counseling for the children that you need, that you learn from this behavior, and hopefully the rest of the community learns from this behavior, that you cannot go out and party on the weekend and be with children. Court. You know, did this clown go to law school? The judge? Yes. It's been a long-standing principle in American law that voluntary intoxication is no defense to a crime that requires intent because intentionally or voluntarily intoxicating yourself is the preliminary intent that suffices for the whole thing. It may have some impact on the sentencing in terms of the severity of the sentence. Either it would enhance or make the sentence worse, or it might mitigate it depending upon the circumstances. Generally, when someone intoxicates themselves voluntarily, this enhances the level of punishment that they suffer because that innately is not looked at as something to be favored by society. This woman needed the time and the fact that she's getting counseling for children she still apparently has the custody of is absolutely ridiculous. This dis indiscretion should be punished. And it's Another thing, one of the purposes of punishment is so that further, it will not further, but others similarly situated are deterred from doing the same thing that the miscreant, meaning the defendant, in one instance does. If you stomp on a defendant, somebody else might say, okay, fine, we don't need to do that. I'll think twice about doing it. You let somebody off with a pat on the back of the hand and then a massage and, oh, poor baby, we understand. Then others will say, what the hell? Let's go ahead and do it. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, I think that she should have gotten some type of um, jail time. And I said to you earlier, looking at her. She should have thrown the book at her. Right. The problem with crystal meth is a humongous problem. Instead of condoning it, it needs to be stomped out. It needs to be treated very harshly so somebody in the future says, whoa, I have children. I don't need to be doing this meth. This woman is doing 40 years in the penitentiary. This ought to be taken as a especially aggravating circumstance. 
Yeah, because I said that when she started crying, when we saw her cry, like I said, that's guilt she's going to have to live with with for the rest of her life. And that's part of your punishment as well. But you was like, oh, crap with that. Right. People do real well with getting over their guilt. You you if you wanted to see it, you should have seen what was coming back from Vietnam. Or what came back from Korea, or what came back from World War II, or what came back from Gulf War One, or over there in the sand pile after 2001. Yeah, all kinds of things, but these people become normal, everyday American citizens. We had a situation with the Civil War where a whole lot of Americans got caught up in that. We had the Spanish-American War. We had World War I, World War II, World, and Korea. We had all of these people all alive at the same time. We had World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam at the same time, where people came in and out of that. Four generations, three generations, and they settled into being normal people, and a lot of them had a lot to deal with in terms of of getting over guilt at things they had done that they felt reprehensible about. See the movie, Saving Private Ryan, if you want to get a hold of it. See Full Metal Jacket. See Platoon. They only touch on it, but a lot of things are dealing, dealt with in those uh, video treatments. Check out My Life, the real situation. Um, Because I was going to say that also, you know, she voluntarily did drugs. No one didn't force her. She didn't take it accidentally. She chose to to get high. She wanted to get high. And you knew you had a daughter there, you know, and you didn't want to be bothered. So that was intentional neglect. Daughter, while your butt is high. Well. Well, you know. I can get away with it. Let me kill this little child. I'm sorry I had it. Uh, All I got to do is say I was on meth and they'll let me go. Hold that thought right there because I want to bring this up. Um, Maxwell Anderson charged with killing dismembering 19-year-old Milwaukee woman Sade Carlina Robinson. This is so sad. and he's a, a, a true monster. Um, one week after his arrest, Macwell S. Anderson has been charged with killing and dismembering 19-year-old Sade Robinson. The charges confirm what many have grown to suspect in the last week and a half that human remains discovered in Kadai Park, April the 2nd, belonging to Robinson, who was reported missing the same day. The case received extensive publicity as additional human remains were found in Milwaukee in the days since. So she went on a date. Anderson and this guy went on a date um, on April the 1st. They went on a first date and she worked at this pizza place. They were saying she was so excited. And um, the two ate dinner. And he went to a bar before going to his place, Anderson home in Milwaukee on the South side. Using surveillance coverage, witness statements and phone tracking records, the complaint pieces together the movement of Anderson, Robinson, her phone and her car, six, about 16 hour period beginning with their meeting over dinner. So his bail, he was arrested. His bail was set at $5 million. So he's not going anywhere. I'm surprised they didn't ROR him saying he was compelled to do what he did. By the way, if he's expected to resist his compulsion to do certain things of such a serious nature, where obviously there's a humongous compulsion to do something that bad. Why are we saying that others who have slighter compulsion should be excused from the consequences of what they do because they were compelled? You see that is part of the support for the rainbow cult. They can't help themselves. They are compelled to be what they are. So everybody has to alter everything to panda to their compulsions. Well, some of these compulsions need to be controlled. 
And if someone is expected to make, uh, uh, well, expected to answer for the inability to control the compulsion like this, why don't we also require that the lesser compulsions are resisted? I always say, did a rape occur? No. Well, then it was voluntary? Yes. If it was voluntary, that meant somebody could have restrained themselves. So every time we have this excuse that a person was compelled to have a certain kind of sex with a minor or in a certain fashion that is deemed elitist uh, to society, we want to excuse them. Well, compulsions, even strong ones, must be controlled in the interest of the public's welfare and well-being. So this is an example. We had a situation here in Memphis where just last week we had a young man who was found sound asleep with a pistol in his lap inside a stolen car. He had had multiple armed robberies and aggravated assaults and armed with a deadly weapon situations. So somebody decided to ROR him and he got in a shootout with the police along with a co-defendant. One cop was killed and two other ones were wounded and he got shot to death himself and another somebody got wounded. So some fool let him out ROR instead of taking the recommendation for a bond, which was $150,000. There would have been several people in much better physical condition and two other people would have been alive today had that happened. So you don't sit there and deal with a situation like this by rubbing someone on the wrist. There, there, you did wrong. What you do is when in an early stage you stomp somebody, the consequences won't come back, but they'll have it in their mind. And it's like, uh uh-uh, I don't do this. I don't like the consequences. You give somebody a chance to be redeemed, but you do not slack on them up front Because what happens is when you take youth and you give them a break, the wrong kind of break, they get the idea that ain't nothing big about the whole thing. Just keep on doing it until, wait a minute, yo, man, I ain't going to deal with this, man. I ain't never got this much time for doing this, man. They ain't going to give me this time, man. I ain't going to take this time. They're going to have to give it to me. I want to bring something up, right? Because I have brought this up to you. I want to bring race into the fold because um, I said with the first, the Indianapolis mom, you know, who um, killed her infant because she was high on meth. I said, now that judge went easy on her. I said he gave her a DEI judgment verdict, right? Because usually that I've seen throughout my lifetime, if that was a white woman, they get let off easy. Black black people, they throw the book. So now that we, with, because the radical left is so into this DEI, I, I'm calling that a DEI um, judgment. Now go to Shade Robinson. You know, I'm I'm really appreciative and glad that her situation, her gruesome murder was made national, you know, on national news. Even Nancy Grace interviewed the mother because for decades, wait, wait, let me, let me speak. Let me speak. Cause for decades, Nancy Grace would not even take the time to highlight all of the missing black girls and black women. Right. And then I also said to you, you know, this is for all women. Never go to a man house on the first, second, or even the third date. And don't even bring him to your house, but definitely don't go to his house. And I said, well, maybe this is a reminder that black women shouldn't date white men. And you said it has nothing to do with race because black men or just men, period, do that. There's no, there's, there's not one particular race that do it more than another. No, it's not. I remember one of the four times I got partially reversed by the Tennessee Supreme Court was I gave a white guy 25 years in the penitentiary for sodomizing an 11-year-old handicapped uh, stepson. And the Supreme Court reduced the sentence to 20 years because they said it wasn't the worst case they could think of. And 25 was the maximum I could give him under the sentencing guidelines. 
So it happens. And white people and black people do this to their own kind and to other people's kinds with an equal frequency. It is a matter of a deviancy, some shortcoming in a person's humanity. It has nothing to do with race, and those shortcomings are across the board. My comment on Nancy Grace, she's an incorrigible sleaze. I have encountered her over the years from time to time, and she is just a sleaze when it comes to irresponsible false reporting, where she deliberately tells tales, lies about what is going on misleads the public for her personal gain. To this day, a lot of the negativity that people have about O.J. Simpson has little to do with the actual evidence, but the lies that Nancy Grace told trying to build up a following when she first broke into this reporting business in Hollywood. She lied about what happened during the course of the trial. She misled the public. She made all kinds of statements that were not backed up by what actually went on. And that's just sleaze. My last time running into her, we were both on Larry King Live, and she was trying to indicate that she had figured out what went on with this murder that took place on a college campus in a laboratory setting. And what she had done is allegedly bribed the people who were the witnesses and some of the detectives to let her know what they were going to do so she could sit there and try to claim that she figured it out. She's a sleaze, allegedly, right. or in my opinion. Let's put it that way.